obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but with the experience now of uh, building the printers, uh, yep. things are going to be uh, going to go much better the next time. And uh, unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to build my own, pr own printer. Uh -huh. so I want to do that uh, as soon as possible, of course. Yeah. And then I have the possibility also to document it step by step. Uh, Beber uh, has uh, documented quite some things while building his own. He's, uh, he's, he took uh, a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I haven't seen him uh, since Tuesday. So uh, I'm going to contact him and uh, get all the, all the pictures about that. Okay. Um, now, how does well, that re relate to the D3D Universal Build Manual? Um, like, we've got pretty decent, but there's gaps in there, right? Like D3D Universal Build Manual, the the one that Vashko made. Yeah, well, it's like uh, about making the axes. Yeah. So it is missing. But then uh, that's about it. Yeah, it's uh, it's not like uh, positioning and aligning and uh, mm -hmm. uh, of the axes. Yeah. So yeah, that, that should be added to. to, to okay, the definitely <clears throat> add that part. There's decent instructionals on troubleshooting and getting the first start. Uh, we got all the videos like on the electrical startup. Plus, there's also I put up a page called D3 Universal Troubleshooting. It's on a universal page. But we do have a bunch of stuff documented already on, on a troubleshooting procedure because, I mean, we've been through this dozens of times through all the issues. So there is a start of a D3D Universal Troubleshooting Guide, which I took from the last 3D printer manual. And then we can add the videos and add more experience to it. Yep. Um, yeah. So that's that part... Um, did you take a look at any any of the budgets or anything like that? How how did it all turned out? Um, no, it's not finished yet. Uh, okay. I had some uh, other things I had to do that were were like uh, piling up. Uh, uh, so I didn't finish it yet. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna gonna look into it for the next few days. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, budget, okay, uh, let us say um, um, Monday probably going to be finished completely, that I have uh, an accurate uh, estimate about the actual cost, because I, I ordered like more stuff than I needed for the workshop now, so I want to bring that uh, into the uh, account, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, about uh, the next event, um, um, I don't, don't know if you have seen the, 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 the mails with Benedict, uh, I suppose so. Yeah, uh, yeah. March, March was too soon, uh, yeah. but uh, end of April, begin May. Yeah. Uh, from 29th to the, the 3rd, I think. Uh, that's like pretty, uh, yeah, it's a done deal. Uh, where because I'm gonna go over there. We're gonna do that in uh, in Hamburg. Uh, he had uh, already uh, some talks with the uh, with the local people and uh, Holger is gonna join the group. Uh, Who is? Yeah, Holger, who was on the workshop, uh, also the German guy from Berlin. Oh, Holger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty. Uh, they they want to go further with the whole project. Uh, the, yeah. yeah. Very nice. And, okay. Um, but they want to focus mainly, as I understand, uh, the printer with the pro uh, the plotting and the so circuits plotting and drilling and uh, all the aspects of Universal. Uh, but I have the Arduino on the side, it would be nice if that's uh, also like uh, well documented, but uh -huh. yeah, in four days, mainly printer, uh, maybe with the second Z-axis, 
Mm -hmm. We talked about that also. We, mm -hmm. we talked about elongating the, the carriage. That's like one option. But uh, yeah, building the the printer with a bigger build platform, mm -hmm. bigger print platform, uh, and a second Z-axis. Mm. So we have uh, like a sort of a uh, uni um, universal axis-based cruiser, more or less. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm like. Uh, I think that would be uh, a nice, uh, a nice approach. Like immediately build a few of those. We haven't done that yet, or at least uh, I haven't. I don't know if you have. Uh, I haven't added the second axis. Yeah, especially when we're uh, we want to drill and plot, and we oh, yeah. have like a, a lot of more stability and yeah, a bigger uh, plotter, plot sur uh, surface also. So yeah, why not, not go for that immediately? Yeah, and no pie? Uh, well, in four days, that, that, that's going to be hard. Uh, if we want to do like uh, the printing, plotting, uh, drilling, and also all the software that, that, yeah. uh, that's involved, and do some free cat, of course. Yeah, that's plenty. And that's like uh, already uh, pretty full. Uh, and then the pie, yeah, um, different workshop, like uh, an extension maybe, a, a few days. But mm -hmm. now for the first event in Hamburg, I think that's, uh, that's about it. Like the, the Arduino and, um, and the dimmer circuit as a, a sort of a backup. Okay. Hello. Hi. Tom. Nice to see ah, here yeah, they are. Hello, hello. Yeah. How are you, sir? How are you all already? Pretty good, pretty good. So we're going over what they're thinking about in, in Germany for for end of April, May. Now, how does that... So have you seen the Steam Camp schedule page? Can we coordinate... Uh, here, let me put the link in. Can we put that event on one of the dates that... Control V. <coughs> that one. Can can we try to coordinate so uh <coughs> Yeah, can that um so April t so now now the news on my side is that Hong Kong is diseased and the borders and the university shut down now there's another guy <coughs> in New Zealand so that's uh okay a disease got us but uh, this guy in New Zealand that wants wants me to come that, that I was in contact with so that's so I'm gonna pursue that now uh, if if Hong Kong is not the eighth then I would be interested in doing something like, like if you look, so can you see the schedule page? No, where is it? Uh, see the link in, uh, in the chat. Okay, so 24th. In the chat, all right. Ah, okay. I would go, just go give us a, ourselves another week. <clears throat> if not the eighth, then the fourteenth, which is no. Let's see. <coughs> eighth is Sunday, so no, not Sunday. Start on Friday or Saturday, which is the fourteenth. If I'd like to see if we can do that. Now it sounds like so we're not into outside of Jessica. You guys are. You guys want more time. Uh, I don't know how Chris feels about it. But, yeah. Um, so I think still do the four day small small event so we don't get burned out. But continue continue the activity because I think it's it's worth it to get more and more people. Like right now we can focus on the basic program and go from there. Uh, if it's a four-day event. Now, we can't say much more without Jessica feeding back or Chris feeding back. Um, so, Michelle, tell me more. 
so do you think you could do like April t like April 24 to May 2 or is that not work and then we're yeah April 24 May 2 would that work for you guys so we can run it in parallel too should we try to coordinate that? Hey, Tom, Tom, I can't. You got a lot of noise back there. Can you mute yourself, Tom? I can't hear Michelle. Yeah, yeah, okay. Michelle, say it again. The, the four day workshop in, uh, in Hamburg. Yeah. Uh, from the 29th uh, until the 2nd of May. So, yeah, it, it won't be a nine-day event. It's going to be a four-day event, and uh, there were going to be talks all, also about uh, software development. Um, Benedict was was uh, going to invite some um, IT uh, friends or colleagues. Uh, to look into a versioning system for 3D, sort of GrabCAD approach. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a four-day event uh, for sure. Uh, so 20, 29 through May 2? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so how do we... Um, April 29th through May 2. Yeah, oh, 29 through May 2. Uh huh. So starting on a Wednesday. Wednesday through Sunday. So a five day or a four day? Four or five? Five, five days. It's five day. Uh, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. yeah. I was still talking about uh, the the program, but um, yeah, it seems they, they want to focus on on the printer, um, printer plotter drill, uh, making uh, circuits with it. Um, uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh, up to what level? Like, like we're saying, getting pretty good accuracy on a dr on a. So so we're getting beyond the drill into the CNC mill. Well, yeah, we want to look into it uh, to to mill the circuits. Mm hmm. Um, see if that's possible. I think yeah, it, it will work better with um, with the second Z axis. Mm -hmm. uh, for milling, if you have, uh, you can have some more torque. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, all the software may streamline that and make a good workflow. That we, yeah, that's one thing I'm gonna design in the next few days. Also, uh, the drill holder with a uh, drill holder and plotter pen combined. You plot it. Then you have the offset to the drill, uh, it drills the holes, you wedge it, and you have a usable circuit board. That should work with the, with the test we did. Uh, yeah. So you don't have to get a, change the tool head, just uh, with the same tool head, prepare it, and, uh, and then etch it. And the etching we used, uh, the solution, it was 16% um, hydrochloric acid. And that's not enough. It's too slow. Uh, I don't know what what uh, solution you guys used. Probably more to thirty percent. Yeah, thirty. Yeah, we used a two 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 to one solution. Two hydrogen peroxide to one muriatic acid. So the, the percentage uh, of the hydrochloric um, acid itself is always like a kind of a percentage. 
uh, and, the, and the total, uh, it's not, never 100% hydrochloric. And uh, the one I bought here, it wasn't on the bottle even, I had to look it up um, and the uh, specs online and it's, uh, it was 16% and it should have at least uh, 20, 23 as a minimum, sometimes you can find 30 or even 37. So yeah, the higher the percentage, uh, the faster you, you get your etching done and you don't get undercutting uh, of, the, of the circuits, yeah. Just, uh, I have to find the, 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 the right, uh, mm -hmm. right solution. Yeah. Um, but it goes fast because else with the permanent marker, I don't. I have to do some more experimentation. Uh, if you draw a circuit with a permanent marker, they have to be thick enough, or you etch away the the, the lines completely. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. Uh, I have to do some testing. So uh, you want to do the. The combined plotter printer and then do the circuits with it yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's like one solution and uh, if we could uh, completely route it that would be even better uh, route it and drill it with the same uh, with the same head yeah using keycad to generate all yeah. this stuff yeah mm -hmm. uh, hold her and Peter yeah that would be really cool directly from uh, from KiCad, uh, even without using flat cam they, they, uh, oh really drilling the holes yeah it was a file but they added some code in uh, in the code editor they got a, an export from KiCad, and they, then they added like, like some G code their their uh, IT is <laughs> pretty good at that stuff uh, but they, they were going to document also how, how it's done uh, so Flat cam was a bit of a pain in the ass to, to install on 16.04 uh, and Ubuntu. Uh, uh -huh. well, it can be done, but uh, it wasn't like a straight out of the box. Uh, but if we can avoid flat cam, yeah, the better. Uh. Okay. How do they, I mean, freak, a KiCad gets Gerber files, so how do you convert that to G code? Actually, I don't know exactly how they did it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask the question uh, to Holger uh, how he did it. But as far as I know, he, he used the file straight from from KiCad, added some code in the code editor, and they used it to drill the holes. Huh. So to the binary vector image. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So it would be nice to have all that uh, all that stuff documented and having a real universal uh, system that can uh, can do all those things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, <clears throat> what do you think about so filament making infrastructure? Where where do you think that might fit in? Because uh, uh, like in the schedule, I was putting. So Steam Camp schedule, I was thinking of uh, like a nine day at that time with more advanced. But if you guys can do the first four days on those tool, tool chains, that's worthwhile. Uh, those are all valuable tool chains. If we can coordinate that and maybe... So if you guys are going five days... Um, five days, so so why, why five days? Like instead of four, like was there any rationale behind that or... Maybe we should just get him on the phone and talk about this. Maybe set yeah, up a call well, next week. I think week. It's, uh, it's like for, for a first camp, uh, he wanted to limit it uh, so it's like more doable. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, it can expand for the, the second time or something, but just, uh, he doesn't want to overdo it the first time, I think. Okay. Uh, just have to get something a little bit back straight away. So. So you're gonna go there, and also, also, uh, Holger's gonna go there. Yeah, I think he stepped away. Oh, here he is. There he is. <clears throat> Holger and Benedict, and you are gonna be there. So three of you. 
Yeah, um, maybe Peter, who's coming mm -hmm. over to Belize also, uh, yeah. maybe he's gonna come, I don't know about that, uh, but uh, uh, Benedict and Holger for sure, and me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and look, uh, look uh, at the software side also, uh, what we've been talking about, that's like very interesting, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if Tom has heard uh, we want to look into a uh, versioning system. Mm -hmm. um, like you have GrabCat. Yep. That's also with versioning, but uh, yeah, an open source um, free cat based uh, system. Yeah, well, uh, what I would suggest is if, if you want to do the. So, did we say. Let me look at the calendar again down there. Um, April 20, 29, yeah, um, that goes through the weekend, so say we have a nine day, how does that look? So that looks like, uh, let's see, that ca captures only one weekend, we should, co can we coordinate so you guys start on Saturday, instead of the 29th? So either the 25th or the 2nd. Uh, let's do them together so we've got the the synergy. That's that's the deal. Like we want to uh, coordinate rather than dissipate, than fragment the effort. This is all aligned stuff. Um, you think we could do a 25th or the 2nd, May 2nd? Uh, I don't know. I have to check with so let's, uh, he's the one that's organizing it. Um, so let's check in on that. Because uh, it would be good to do, I would like to do a nine day, like, I want to get experience starting with um, the film and making stuff. There's a lot of stuff there, and that's really critical to any anything we're going to do, like in the summer and in the future, like furniture and yeah, construction. Yeah, I know. I was, so, I was planning to work on that also, like, uh, in the next few months. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, like, doing the developments... Of ba or basic development or like uh, getting basic experience yeah I would do that outside personally outside yeah. of the camp and then integrate yeah. it into the steam camps uh, I want well, yeah we, we talked about it also uh, like in the mails uh, I want to get really familiar with, with the with the subject matters before uh, being an instructor right Right, so that sounds good. Now, um, <clears throat> since we've done that, we've got the grinders and stuff. There's there's modules there like the gear downs, like planetary gears that are excellent experiments. And just I I think we can do it with a small motor, like a five dollar hundred watt drill motor. It'll be slower, but I think that's part of the experiment to see how low you can get the the cost for. A, highly functional system that's hugely geared down uh, so I think that's uh, there's plenty of like transmission and gear down experiments and motor experiments um, I'd like to see it happen um, so let's get let's get Holger and and Benedict on a phone see if we could move it to either the 25th or the second because if we do a nine day you gotta do it like two weekends so people are missing only five days of work instead of seven days of work if people Sign up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's not yet vacation time. Eh? No. For us in, in Europe, I don't think uh, in States also. Right. That starts in June. Uh, July for uh, most countries. Okay. Uh, July, August, that's the vacation time here. Okay. And uh, some countries, uh, they have like... Uh, uh, the schools have six weeks or uh, like in Belgium it's eight weeks. Mm -hmm. People plan that stuff, uh, within those months. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're st and you're still. Just to remind you, you know, you've got an appointment at Factory Farm on June June one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. So June one, I'll see you here. Um, uh, Jessica's gonna. Say it again. Holger is probably coming over for uh, June. Okay. The factory farm. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, Jessica is going to be there for four or six weeks. Tom's going to be there for two. We're kind of getting the 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 schedule final. So you, Chris, and William, Chris, you, Chris, and William, in the first month. Tom, Jessica, Jeff, and who else? Oh yeah, this other guy, Gabe. One of the, he's pretty good actually, Gabe. Um, so we've got it covered for June. July and August that's going to be construction Katarina Gary and Jessica so that's we, we're pretty good on that now if we get more people to sign up I want to get a push like ideally like if we could get like 48 people because we're building up a bunch of infrastructure in the forest like a, another kitchen an outdoor bathroom shower facility so we can handle like an overflow so we're getting pumped up because we want to get some good work done um, there's only two people signed up so it's really good for the whole summer um now okay let's well, get I'm, I'm, yeah about yeah. working on stuff uh and uh, and the workshops um uh close by uh i have to be careful a bit because i i have to finish the motor yeah uh, i'm already thinking about the uh, second version get this of course running and have uh, like a self-starting version like yeah a complete new approach I have to finish the WebGL the tutorial and write a, a new add-on for the, the Blender 2.8. So I have loads of stuff to do aside from the Steam Cam. So yeah. uh, I can't neglect that. Uh, I have to, yeah. uh -huh. have to be done. So how are you, you going to move forward on the motor in your ample spare time? Well, it's, it's on top of my list. So what's your approach? What's your approach right now? So you you did the initial prototype. What's the next main thrust? No, I have to finish the. I have all the parts. Uh, I have to finish the the electronics so okay. uh, I can run it. Um, build the um, um, dynamo meter. Okay. So I can measure so all of that. RPM. Um, a coil winder, maybe because mm -hmm. the the next one I want to do uh, uh, use serpentine coils. Um, it's not, not individual coils, but big coils that you form like in a star shape, sort of. I don't know uh, if you're familiar with that. No. And then, uh, like, three big coils, sort of star shape, um, that, uh, that you can... It's a three-phase motor, and yeah. it's uh, self-starting, self and you can change the direction, so it's much more controllable. But uh, yeah, it's gonna take some, uh, quite some development. But uh, if that works, you have, we have uh, a very good uh, basis to build motors with a um, yeah, diversity of motors, small motors, big motors, but self-starting and uh, much more controllable. And that's the, the direction we should go. Like the motor that I'm working on now, it, it is not self-starting. It's uh, unpredictable which direction mm -hmm. it's going to run. If it self-starts, because it's possible, but not uh, mm -hmm. uh, no certainty in that. What is the, can you point me to, what's the keyword for the, the motor design that you're pursuing for the next iteration? Jessica, can you speak or you can't, you don't have voice? I don't know, can you? Oh yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, Hello. okay. Um, well, there is a PDF, maybe I've sent it before to you. Do you know the keyword? Um, yeah, well, I'm gonna copy the link. Hey, hey Martin, yeah. I'm kind of, uh, I wanted to, uh, ask you about refinement and i think it's important that we refine each one of these uh pieces the the parts of the yeah. that went into the workshop and and uh so anyway i, I have on my you know, what i'm going to be doing today in the next couple of days is working on the power electronic stuff because i want it totally ironed out and i want it to be you know smoothly flowing by the time of the next workshop yeah so in and, four days and, uh, then also yeah there, there's also another part of that is uh if we if we are going to do the battery charger using the pwm electronics uh, to charge a whole packet one time mm -hmm. i'd like to 
have that to where, uh, you know, I'm going to probably need some help with the code, the Arduino code, because uh, it, it's, it's, there's a, some algorithms in there about how do you uh, uh, control the power and switch from constant current charging to constant voltage charging yeah. and things like that. It needs to implement this two states charging and then, uh, uh, you know, how do you... There's there some other interesting things you could do with it. You can do trickle charging at the beginning if the batteries are real low in power. Yep. And then once it's completed, you can uh, keep keep a little bit of trickle going in to keep it refreshed and up to date. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, is, is there somebody, out, uh, can we put that out there if somebody could work on some Arduino code? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, so the first question is the requirements if you can produce all those requirements then we can uh, get a get somebody to work on it um yeah if you do if you do the requirement you will pr the step number one is look at industry standards what already exists for code that does similar things and then build on it but beyond that it's like it's just timing sequences in arduino that's uh not particularly a big deal um so if you have the specification it, 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 it's real it's real straightforward but but my my thought was to get some collaboration, some interest in other people in the community, get them involved in this thing, you know. Yeah. And they can do that from from their own home. And they yeah, can absolutely. Contribute. I mean, uh, what I would suggest on that is, is as soon as you got the specification, let's pu publicize that on the OSE workshops page. Let's see if anybody's there. There's a lot of Arduino people on there, and um, if if you want, I can put it out in a newsletter for more people uh, to work on it, or we can do a dedicated design sprint for that as well. But let's so let's clarify exactly what we need and then as something that's taskable not something that we where we just say oh we're going to get somebody to do code and then we have no clear specifications just when we have it very clear then that stuff can get done like in a second because it's not hard uh, so that i think the biggest question is to define the specifications for for what we need like okay you want this code to do exactly this and then we can farm it like good farmer scientists been there for three years yeah, um, that's good. I mean, we want all of that, and and we want to combine to a good program. And let's see how it works with Germany. Now, so maybe like Michelle, like the next action step would be let's get Holger and, and Benedict on a on a call on a box, like as soon as we can, so we can coordinate for that meeting. And I would like to see if we can do the nine day. Like you guys can do the. The five day on the critical stuff. I'd like to do that too. Like if you guys are doing it, I'll do it too. Um, it's all valuable stuff. And then I think we we probably want to do continue on a filament making making stuff because that's just too exciting. And that's it's really low hanging fruit. That I mean we've done it. It works great. We got to start like by the end of the summer. I want to start making filament that we're selling. So we're going to start with a filament maker in the first month of the summer, like we build the printers and a filament maker. And then from then on, we're just cranking out filament the whole summer. That thing is running like 24 seven. Um, and we got bales of garbage that we're chewing through. Yeah. Well, making a mm. consistent thickness from a uh, recycled material is going to be quite a challenge. Yeah, you better have X-ray tutorial. No, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, you you basically it grind it up and melt it and then extrude it into a, a wire, you, right? If you know the composition, I mean, you're not going to be throwing on unknown stuff. Like, that might throw it off. But then again, uh, even if it's very irregular, we know that our our extruder works from 1.75 to 3, right? So, therefore, if we have a filament sensor with sensor, then we can... Per print perfectly with 1.75 to 3 millimeter filament if it varies by 100 percent when you put it into the g code if it's like 1.75 or, uh, or 3 yeah. millimeters and it's consistent your speed rate stays the same if the filament varies then the, you have to have like uh, the same pressure coming out of the nozzle so or or the, the filament has a, a cons uh, consistent thickness, or the, the extruder has to compensate for it, as far as I understand. Yeah, but that's but already in Marlin. Do that. yeah. Marlin but has that. Marlin has yeah. filament with sensing capacity and adjustment in live, live adjustment. Well, that's all how does that feed to the extruder? Uh, how is that controlled? Is it controlled by 
speed or is it controlled by the, the how full the extruder reservoir is or what? And you're talking about production side of filament? Filament production? No, I'm talking about the extruder. You know, we're, we're talking about print, you're talking about you printing. We're using a irregular filament uh, yeah. diameter, and and so if 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 you have the extruder head, if it requires to continuously feed at a constant rate, then then that would make it challenging. But but if it if it constantly monitors how much it has in the extruder head, you know, and, and just keeps that full, then then that would make it more flexible as well, far as handling. There are filament width sensors out there already, and Marlin firmware already has that capacity built in, so it'll adjust by feeding the filament okay. slower or faster, depending on a, on the width it senses. Is, is so, it optical or is yeah, it optical. Okay. So yes, there's. It seems pretty straightforward. Well, the, yeah, it is. It is if you know how to do it, but but it's not documented well. It's we got to basically shake it down. There's people that have done it and those open source designs exist. But once again, as anything, it's, it's all poorly documented and we got to track it down and, and make it work. That's why like, I want to get on the filament sense filament thing first thing so that, you know, by month one, we've got like good production by month two, we've got excellent production by month three, we're, we're ready for selling filament and stuff like that. So, that will be like an ongoing, constant development happen happening. It's just too important because I, I do want to do that plastic lumber stuff, plastic lumber and panels in the third month. So, yeah. Um, uh, which, which kind of plastic do you have in mind? Uh, abundance of, there's an abundance of ABS and vinyl. Like vinyl, like vinyl is the most common building most common plastic in the world there's tons of it in america you got vinyl siding vinyl everything that's or polyvinyl chloride but basically yeah, vinyl PVC. vinyl compounds can you, can you do this in printing with pvc i don't know yeah uh, yeah yeah okay. it's pretty good well just uh, yeah, the fumes uh, you have to have an enclosure and some filtering probably yeah you gotta i mean all this even pla is not safe i mean the the vapors from pla are even uh, yeah, but they're the mildest. And they're the mildest, right? So. And when you when you recycle ABS, uh, there's like flame retardants in there, and. Uh, right. So there's a whole. We gotta basically build in, into our printers. We gotta build filters. Like, I saw Ultimaker already has the filters built in, but we need to do that. We need to do that and do it out in open air spaces, not, not like, like in a workshop, uh, basically like getting into. <laughs> active carbon uh, yeah or, uh, yeah definitely um, or mushrooms send it into a pipe it into a big pit of uh, wood chips that's got the right mushrooms fungus go growing in there and they'll gobble it up they do that so uh, yeah that's yeah, I mean that's that's kind of popular like pulse statements and yeah. bioremediation we're gonna get that long-haired integrated with the biodigester, which we're building for the 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 facility. And stuff. Okay. Um, when can we get? So so can you contact? Let's let's con reach out to Holger and and them and yeah, let's see if we could I'll get them next them. week. So the, the exact question is if they, they want to start the twenty fifth and do a nine day camp or start the twenty fifth and do like a four day camp. Uh, or five-day camp, but uh, like running at the same time, like you guys are doing. Yeah, no, I think five is perfectly fine. Now we don't want to tire them out or anything like that. So, yeah, I was so twenty-fifth or the second. LOL. Hashtag selfie here. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask. I don't know if uh, yeah, if it's possible, but. Uh, Ask. yeah so uh which sounds like so jessica what's uh what's on your side tell me tell us uh you're still up for the uh so i mentioned did you hear me say that that the disease got hong kong and they're shutting down the university so not going there but i'd like to do Z new zealand where the guy wants wants me there uh Jessica, how are, how do you feel regarding 
running your thing. Can't hear you. Can you hear now? Try again. Can't hear you. If you're speaking. It's turning off. Oh, there you go. Speak. <laughs> yeah, I have to hold very still. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I missed what you were saying. It cut off. Right. Maybe let's let's turn off the video. It might be uh, getting some challenge. Um, yeah, Jessica. So, so we're saying, are you? So, are you still into doing the the March event? Now, I w what I would suggest for March, given that Hong Kong, which was a Sunday, the eighth is not happening. Uh, I would push that to the thirteenth, or mm -hmm. rather the fourteenth, which is Saturday. So we have the weekend, in there, and therefore people are missing two days of work. So that's that's the only thing I would say. Uh, if you're up for it. And now Chris joined. So Chris, if you want to pipe in, um, if you heard that. Chris, we can't hear you if you're trying to speak. And Jessica? I can hear you. I can hear you now. Oh, I won't move. <laughs> don't move. You do yeah. whatever you're doing. I, I don't know. This is all this touchy. It's like, you know, bring dinosaurs back to life, these old computers, I guess. But Okay. Okay, well, spew your wisdom onto the, the group here. Well, <laughs> regarded, regarding... Well, so, yeah, so the I, question I'm is... sitting at the schedule. Yeah. Go ahead. No, uh, schedule-wise, regarding like, the, are are, would you be interested in doing the event, uh, or able to do it on a on a fourteenth, which is the Saturday Sunday, and then Monday Tuesday for a four day, um, brief. In March. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That would probably work better in yeah. terms of people. Yeah. So, we want to button down. Uh, the curriculum based on the learnings from this and reduce it to a four-day program and uh, make some decisions there. The thing is also I'd like all the instructors to to continue practicing like I put up this instructor exam thingy on the wiki but basically I'll take a look at that the instructor exam like I'd like to see if like um, we can set a date for when you can actually do all of that now I've seen how you you work on your like for example Jessica you're pretty decent on this but we should be practicing so that the workflow that we're teaching we can spin you know out of our mind in a second like sleepwalking but that's the uh, and I'm trying to capture that in an instructor exam if you have feedback on that but basically uh, let me paste that in uh, but it's a type 10 minute test uh, that walks you through like you got to be able to do the wiki do the free CAD and upload part libraries Readily and that means you also have to have no have good knowledge of how to build and troubleshoot the printer now troubleshooting the printer There's a started page called D3D universal troubleshooting so that we want to be infinitely intimately familiar with so To walk through like a imagine a printer that has everything wrong with it How do you troubleshoot it and that's kind of we have to be ready for that in a second and the good news is that there's very <clears throat> concrete tests we can do uh, but we wanna like one of the main priorities is we wanna start familiarizing ourselves with that because we wanna get the printer built <clears throat> like the first day like we did in Texas there and troubleshoot all the issues um, by that night now I also found out the mess up there like with the axes the bearings, they were wrong, actually. Um, just posted on OSC Workshop's Facebook page, but they were 16 millimeter instead of 15 millimeter. Are you guys there still? Oh, wow. Hello? Hello? 
Oh, sorry, I was talking to myself. Oh, when, when did I cut out? There you go. Uh, can you hear me? When did I cut out there? I cut out. Yeah, you cut out a couple of minutes ago. Oh, man. No, I was saying about... Uh, let me paste in an instructor exam. Like, this is what instructors want to be able to do. So, take a look at that. We need to determine the price structure for the a four day event. So we can work on that today. We can maybe wrap, wrap our head around it. Uh, but let's that we started that in a in a doc. Chris, can you hear us though? We still have and if yeah yeah guys the 29th of this month we do still have that sprint uh, we mentioned that in the last day but let's still get around February 29 like a four-hour session where we do a sprint on a Pi tablet getting all that to work in a functional form I'm thinking of actually getting an external battery pack instead of our own since the, those are uh, like level one is get a $13 battery pack that that the Pi could run on I was thinking about that for simplicity and getting that thing up and running in a sh small short, fa uh, small form factor. Yeah. Or, or the battery packs uh, can be pre-made by the instructors, but uh, could know. be. Um, we want to get to that basic level of functionality if we're going to do that. I, I would still like to see the tablet since it's such a rich learning experience. I would still like to see it. So if we tighten up the day one, we master the printer day one, no question about it. Day two, we master the FreeCAD and then the the plotting workflow. We can try some of the circuits, but that's not guaranteed. And then I would say day three, we um, what's left there? We've got the little motor. I think we should do the little motor and and little CNC CNC uh, like hole drilling stuff. So combine like and let's get one form of arduino from a simple like if we could drill the arduino that would be good otherwise it would be interesting to replicate the strip board arduino or an arduino kit uh, i talked to mitch altman and he does arduino kits that you can buy them off the shelf but it's kind of like cheating a little bit because you're not really it's like all prepared parts um strip board is good we had a, a breadboard Arduino that was working, but with a, a different uh, programmer. Yeah. We used. I had like three different models based on different chips. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's a problem with the CH340. Uh, it didn't didn't uh, work very well for us and for you probably uh, didn't also. So yeah, use different programmers and. Uh, I'm going to transfer the, the design, the, the breadboard to a strip board. It's a pretty straightforward, so uh, yeah, that will take me maybe one or two days. Yeah, and simplify it, like, let's just get one channel. We don't need, like, we in this one, we did, like, 12 channels. Uh, well, eight, eight digital and five uh, Yeah, just do things. one. Simple, like the simplest, guaranteed to work. Now, the program, the the con serial converter that you use, was that the identical one as in the YouTube video, or no? It was the different one, right? Yeah, well, it was a CH340. But there's base, different ones, different ones with that. Didn't have the, DT, the DTR right, uh, right. connection. Did you end up finding one that did have that in your batch of no. parts? No, the okay. other one did have the DTR also, okay. but uh, using the reset button. Uh, yeah. Like while uploading the, the sketch, you push the reset button a few times yeah. and uh, and it loads. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, we yeah. got to get the identical part. I thought when I ordered it, that part was identical to the video, but it wasn't. So, and I yeah. found other places where you can get the identical part. So that should not uh, have the same issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so I still feel good about the Arduino part, and we can do. What about for the pa and then to to get people on a power electronics? 
Yes, possibly a MOSFET, but we also have the solid state relay that's on a control panel that can handle large currents already. That's in a D3D Pro control panel, and there's an empty space on it on our panel already. So why don't we do the Arduino and power that out, and we can we can run huge loads with that already if we don't want to use the MOSFET or IGBT. So there's ways to basically take what we did and you know struggled with and do it as okay replicable half hour experiments kind of deal. So uh, what the, how fast can it, can it switch? Yeah, but that can't switch. It it can't. It, it's not a switching power supply, but yeah, it's, it's a. Not like for, uh, yeah. Duty cycle. Right. It's just either on or off. It's a hertz cycle, a second, a couple of times a second, it can do. Um, but we can still do a a direct driven. But I mean, I don't know. For the four day. No, I do. I do like the third day is up to some some of the mill parts where we're continuing like for just to print out what we designed already like print out and and start working with a drill um possibly even like the another axis is a 25 dollar experiment we can add that on the third day as the project for the third day and the mill that would be a very compelling thing because that takes this from a completely you know low performance kind of a thing to a much much more stable thing so that's a yeah, well, we can yeah i i do like that wouldn't that be better to, to do it like immediately because it's a different configuration uh, well we'd have to big. start we have to start with a larger board but we can just leave the placeholder yeah, i don't know for the quick build the, i would just leave it out and then build it in the third day because it can be it can be like put right on if we if we leave space for it yeah, but you need a bigger print surface, so uh, you need a bigger plate, you need a bigger spring plate if you combine those, bigger build tag. Yeah. So, yeah, if you do it immediately, you, you don't have to do that step uh, of a, a 6 inch and then go to an 8 inch or how much is it? Well, we can go to 6 by 12 without, we have to think about it, but you can do like 6 by 12 where you don't change the 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 Y, you change it only in the, Z di in the X direction, but leave the Y y length of it yeah. if you have the two-sided support maybe but yeah we see that like i don't want to complicate the first day because we want to just get that thing up like bam just really simple and we can even use the larger parts but but um maybe leave out that last axis for a little bit i don't know or even just that it's the same size but it's just got huge stability for perfect milling operations that's I think that's that's doable and then we leave it up to the student to say okay now you know how to add another axis um, we can talk about scalability but not necessarily do it there mm -hmm. we can put on like a larger we can include maybe like a larger uh, spring steel plate and um, but I think it will also be acceptable if it's this, still the same dimensions but it, now it's got the stability because that does mean a lot for for milling and hole drilling and it, and then we are saying okay we're we're learning about the process of structure you know making structure stronger so that it can work for other things but i think yeah i, I think there's so much we can do like with the three things we have done yeah there's plenty um plenty of interesting stuff i would still like for the super diverse experience I'd say add, keep the Raspberry Pi tablet and make it simple too. Uh, that does add like the Raspberry Pi tablet isn't Pi tablet isn't cheap. It's like $150, $200 experiment. But I don't know. I I'd like to see it. Um, and then we can focus on like you said in the uh, end of April, May. Just really really focus on. On those those ones but but every step we're building we're just building inch by inch we're building more experience and more refinement I, I think we learned so much I mean I learned a lot during this program uh, myself so it was really really good um, Chris are you uh, are you back there or let's see apparently microphone is not working
Chris, can you speak up or no you can't. Mic is not working. Why don't you call into the call me on Call on Gmail. Eight one six eight six six three two one seven. Can you do that? Chris, can you try? Uh, sorry. Eight one six. So it's eight one six. Eight six six three two one seven. That should be able to. Everyone should be able to hear it. <clears throat> Yeah, Chris. Chris, can you hear? Hey, yes, yes, I can. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can everybody hear Chris awesome. as well? Thank you. Sorry about that. Can you get also? Can you guys also hear Chris? Oh uh, no. I, I can can't hear anyone else. If anyone else is talking. No, nobody else is talking right now. But is anyone else? Oh, okay. Okay. Everyone says they they can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, Chris. So, so, so disease has taken out Hong Kong. So I'm not going there. But I am looking to go to actually. New oh Zealand. no! There was, the, there was another guy who wanted a steam camp. But if we don't oh. have a restriction on the eighth, which was they wanted to start on Sunday, I'm proposing okay. we can start on the 14th of of March if you're still up for it. So, so I wanted to get your ah. feedback on how how you feel about there's that Saturday Sunday. Then Monday, Tuesday, so people miss two days of work if they if they got that, and then yeah. Jessica's interested in that too. So I I'd like to keep keep this going because I think we're learning and refining product and and sucking less every time, which is wonderful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So that would be the 14th to the 17th. Um, so I'm still I'm planning on still going up to, on the summit on the on Friday, but I might be coming back. That uh, yeah, so I would be coming. Back from New York on oh, the 13th, wait. but I wait. When is the summit? Uh, the summit is on the 13th. Perfect. So that yeah, I, I like it. Okay, mm. I, I want to. I'll. See it's nestled the there, so I'm already, we're dedicating all the time for it. I'm like that. I think that that it uh, makes a lot of sense. Oh wow. Um. Well, that's perfect. So I, I want to make the summit and then and go hit some steam. Wow. Okay, that's yeah. good. So we we we'd just be maybe starting a little bit later on you know on Saturday, but I'm I uh, think that that uh, keeping our momentum going is is uh, is a good thing. Um, uh, yeah, as far as my notes for from from the process so far, the, the things that I I feel like were mm, need to fill in the most other than um, some of the documentation and curriculum is uh, in our systems more a asynchronous. Um, communications, like we talked about kind of last time, of just finding some chat kind of asynchronous thing. I was experimenting with IRC in my work log and stuff to see how it might embed in the wiki, um, and then getting the, the YouTube videos uh, uploaded the, the day of the curriculum, you know, before the of uh, the curriculum, um, so that uh, mostly 
A lot of my um, notes and concerns or, or thoughts um, have been geared towards making it more, uh, the collaborative feeling be, uh, presence be, be more felt at all the locations, but especially for the remote folks and making it, you know, if we can crack it so that, yes, we have, can do lots of different locations, physical locations at the same time, but if, in particular if we're able to really um, include remote participants, um, I think that there's a, uh, you know, there's, whole extra scaling potential there. So yeah. that's that's kind of where I'm want, wanting to, yeah, where I think um, I'm wanting to put, put some work. Uh, yeah. yeah. I missed a bunch of what you guys were talking about at first, so I apologize. But, um, uh, yeah, but, yeah, so of this this next one that you're wanting to do of uh, is as a four-day one, yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely, for me, uh, doing a four-day one, and probably for, for a lot of people, it's, it's a lot l less disruptive. Uh, it's conceivable that I could do a lot more four-day ones uh, over a uh, course of a year than than uh, nine-day one. No, it's true. I mean, nine day is no joke, and I'm I'm proposing we would do it like every other month or something, and mm. then just keep the momentum going because I think we're picking up steam and momentum with every one we do, and it generates more mm -hmm. interest. So. So I like that part. Yeah. 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 Agreed. And um, yeah. yeah so, so I, 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 I typed up some of my notes and put in, into my log, but just when I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, to connect. Um, but some of the other things I was I was wanting to uh, to add in or throw it, throw out there um, would be to I want to uh, seed the uh, useful prints um, or working on the useful prints uh, library. Yeah. Um, to have basically to have a large number of or to have a variety of things that can people can run it will be both um, a calibration print throughout the camp you know if you keep your printer that was w one thing I definitely noticed that as we were running just a couple of more prints um, to continue learning uh, troubleshooting but also calibrating and learning how to op how to operate the printer and what looks good and bad um, having a couple of useful things that then throughout like uh, you know, we printed out like SD card trays and some other kind of real things too that um, I'd much rather be pulling from an OSC useful print library than something like Thingiverse, um, you know, that are already are D3D optimized. And uh, it, yeah, both improving the immediate value and seeing physically the immediate value, but also uh, and calibrating, you know, uh, dialing in, really dialing in the printer. But it also opens up uh, the development queue for the pre CAD lesson. So it's a challenge to people to make a better screwdriver or, you know, um, uh, make something else um, mm -hmm. uh, to add to that, though. So. Yeah, that's a good comment. Um, what page on the wiki would that be? I don't know. Uh, you had, there is a useful, I know there's a useful prints or useful, um, useful yeah, useful prints. Useful 3D prints page, yeah. Useful 3D print page, so we could do it. It could be a subsection of that that's like D3D optimized, you know, like uh, could just be in. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's turned up. There's a page, useful yeah. 3D prints, that's exactly what it is, and then we should optimize it for. Mm. Uh, so basically, maybe let's start a library of things that have come out of the Steam camps. Uh, and mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so inching towards that open source everything store yeah. concept where we're just refining prints and getting ones that are valuable for different products yeah yep yeah yep uh, and and um but uh, otherwise, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah with the, uh, mentioning the concept of degenerate tool chain meaning that okay now it's optimized for d3d and then everyone can print it they don't have to mess around with a bunch of settings or know-how it's like already there and we can yeah. make comments like Okay, here's how you print that and uh, really make it easy for our community to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that, otherwise, I feel like the, the going through the process of building the printer at a 1.2 nozzle and then dialing it in, work, learn, getting it to do the plotter thing, and then uh, building on it and building on it. Uh, w uh, one thing that, that Sean also really uh, wanted to do is as, as we went along, um, uh, towards at the very end, is we. Um, it's a good learning experience. We were trying all these different tool heads, and then we put a six millimeter, a point six millimeter nozzle on at the end for a, like a finer, or you know, um, for a small fine, you know, print. Uh, mm -hmm. After a whole week of uh, test prints of all these different things that really help shake it down and work out all the kinks. Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, seeing the machine that you build do all these different things, um, yeah, obviously this is high value. So I think we're yeah. What do you think about? So you think we should include the Pi tablet on day four? So parts, parts. Uh, I think that we can if we um, yes if we are able to. So if we can get, we got to get the um, the simple case to a to a steady state, you know, stable. Um, you know, boards mount on, case clips around, and it's just a simple blocky grip angle. But um, you know, if we can uh, as a uh, teach curriculum get get it to that point, then I think that running it on the last day is no problem because the uh, legacy like we have, we will know basically the software, basically the starting point of the hardware. And on that, we can have little nut catches and connection points on the corners and stuff, but uh, where that could be the next, um, uh, you know, next team camps or even after the team camp, people can keep working on these, you know, the different modules. But uh, without um, the base state on which you can build modules, I think it might be just too, too overwhelming um, to, try and, to try and fit in. Mm -hmm. but. What's your schedule look like until the next team camp to, to nail to do that. So Jessica's uh, Jessica's got decent time to continue working on a case. She's already prototyped uh -huh. some quick prototypes in paper. Cool. Um, how much time do you have available before March 14 to be able to do some refinements? I should I should definitely be able to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, between between now and then. Mm -hmm. It's not, especially now we have a couple of, of active uh, D3Ds and developers. We can take, um, you know, kick parts back and make sure it's uh, sitting on everyone's uh, components. Yeah, it's, it's really not that... The base case that I'm talking about is really not that complex of a, of a design. I, I definitely think I can um, make some... You know, make sure that, that that happens. Yeah, and we want to leverage people who came out of this. So I know Jeremy's got yeah. some time to do it. Um, yeah. Jessica's continuing. Um, Tom, I mean, Tom, Tom, I guess you're working on a power electronics refinements, but get your printer. You got the printer. I mean, maybe try looking into the. Uh, I know you got the FreeCAD workflow down decent or semi decent. Maybe we can collaborate. But but out of the people that I know, Jeremy, Jessica, myself, mm -hmm. you can continue. Who else? Who else in the crew? Like like Michelle on the remote side there, do your people have time to work on a tablet? Because we, we did call forth for the 29th as a, a design sprint on a tablet. 29th of February, Saturday, like let's spend like a few hours on that. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think some people will definitely find the time to, uh, to collaborate on that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll ask the question. Uh, I have some some things to communicate about, so uh, I had that on the list. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for the the Europeans, yeah, let's get a meeting with them to see how we can coordinate the late April, and let's see how we can get the people that attended continuing on the Pi tablet. So there's definitely a little bit of room there for collaborative development. Now we can also post that out to the OSC workshops page for anyone else who's built or has access to to the D3D. Um, and yeah, I can just continue uh, raising the energy on that. But yeah, I think uh, I think that just the learning from the Pi tablet was that you need cables. You need the correct cables. That's the first thing. So we can address that and move forward. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if you buy, uh, if you order them uh, in Banggood or uh, AliExpress, they're, they're pretty cheap. So. Yep. So that will be the next step on that. Yeah. Um. So let's see. How do we coordinate? So let's let's maybe um. Let's maybe continue this meeting weekly, and let's see if we can um. Get. The the Germans on the show next week. And the Europeans yeah. along with us, yeah. What time is a good time for you guys? I, I kind of like Friday, because right after that we can just chill out with some Bud Light and kick back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. Well, we, we will 
get some decent European beer instead. Uh huh. <laughs> right. Would 1 p.m. work for you guys on that side? Uh, yeah, it works. It's a bit. Uh, a bit late? No, 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 it's okay. It's like dinner time more or less here, but uh, yeah. Uh, it works. Well, so you can then bring the Belgian Bud Light to the, to the meeting. Okay. Uh, so say say 1 p.m. next Friday. Okay. Let's yep. do it. Let's continue. Um, so then let's like Chris and Jessica and myself will will carry the torch forward on this one, and. Um, so let's coordinate basically like um let's nail the curriculum so it's already like i kind of made notes that's refined but we got to decide on a price structure we kind of want to bounce it back and forth a little bit so it makes sense so that we can make more than minimum wage on it but um yeah let's do that but it's worth it i do it i do it if i had to pay Okay. Um, all right. So. For, for once or twice, maybe. <laughs> Say what? Right. For once or twice, maybe. Yeah, maybe. once or twice, but yeah. No, we gotta, we gotta get. My, my focus is like since we got most of the product, uh, do some, get some marketing, get some of the the publicity out there and stuff, so we can have people sign up, so we have somebody to teach and build a community. So. Yeah. We talked about the. Uh, I don't know if it would work in the states, but yeah. here uh, it's like uh, and every business has a team building days. Yeah. And uh, yeah, building together on a bigger model printer maybe or uh, uh, yeah, you could make a program, a one day program, uh, team, team building program, mm. and that would sell. I think uh, because oh, yeah. there's a, uh, they have a budget to go, to organize those days. Huh. Um, no, that's an interesting one. We we talked about it. Uh, where does that fit with our ample spare time here? Well, no. If we, if we think about the business model to to um, yeah to do it on an even more regular basis. Yeah. Right? Mm. One, once uh, every week or one day every two weeks, and you get the bills paid. Yeah. Huh. Uh, no, that's that's good. I mean, it's like just building a, you know, even like a 12-inch bed D3D simple or something, or just like a larger D3D Pro. That's doable. Yeah. Well, I was I was thinking like uh, a business that could use a printer. Yeah. Yeah. And like an architecture uh, bureau or something. Yeah. And they, they do a team building day and they build that stuff. Yeah. Uh, as an experience, huh. but the, the the business owner can use that printer afterwards. It's like an extra selling point. Yeah. No, that's actually know. really good. I don't know if it would work. Uh, it was just an idea. No, it definitely would work. It's <clears throat> can we execute it? Yeah. That's that's a good one. Well, as you know, as I'm getting like kind of like my production kit production infrastructure up really tight and getting able to do that effectively yeah i mean if we have the printers i mean it doesn't hurt us to do that experiment really quick just you know reach out to a bunch of people like that and see if we can you know in some major city and just do it you know mm. like kansas city like just, okay i just call up some okay there's been architects who would, i know the guy right the principal there and say hey uh you want to do a team building workshop on a 3d printer and you use the printer yeah love it uh, we could we could try that. Um, wouldn't be such a big experiment to in terms of how much it costs us to run that experiment. It would be a day, day and a drive for me, a day and a drive to Kansas City. Yeah. No, let's put it in a backlog here. Yeah. Definitely. Like like once we. <clears throat> you know, as we're preparing the kits for this time around, it's like we're pretty much in a much better position. If I have a day to kind of like think about this, uh, I'll try to see if I can organize something in Kansas City. You guys, you guys keep asking people around you, like, um, 
see if we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, Michelle, like it's probably like the biggest task there is like you need to get your infrastructure, your cluster up and running, right? Because you don't have you don't have any of the D3Ds yet running for um, your cluster, or well, uh, one of the participants, uh, the, the the guy from Ghent, yeah, uh, left his printer now in the workshop, yeah. Uh, because he wants to work off there or collaborate with me. Yeah. So I have one available, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's, not, uh, it's not mine. So uh, actually, I want to I want to bring uh, build uh, Universal, uh, a Mega, and uh, and a Pro. So there there, there are some uh, demonstration models. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have to have the different models. Uh, Universal Mega or Pro Mega? Uh, well, both. Both, yeah. No, I mean, both are, like, once you see all of them next to each other, I think it becomes exponentially more compelling to see that, okay, these are all the same thing, but they, yeah. they just look different. Yeah, to demonstrate the yeah. universal access principle. Uh, yeah. Um, so, the, uh, yeah, it's going to be some work, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. In the next few months. Okay. Sounds good, sounds good. Yeah, so let's continue the... <clears throat> <clears throat> the energy, the momentum here. So, so 1 p.m. next Friday, and in between, then, like, I'll be in touch with Chris and Jessica on, on the details of rolling this out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sound good? Well, uh, yeah, I will do the the cost calculation uh, in the next few days. So, begin beginning next week, you will uh, uh, have an oversight. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you guys. So, yeah, I mean, to summarize and to, to leave off here, yeah, I mean, it was a major epic effort. I think it was somewhat stressful for all of us to get everything in time, but but the good news is that every time we improve, right? And then towards excellence. So so I think I think we're on the right track here. And for what, you know, for what we did for the first one, I think I think that's successful that we we did get uh, some iterations happening and people already contributing value which which has happened so that's exactly what we want and we'll just work on scaling that so I'm, I'm glad how it turned out and I, I would say it was a little stressful uh, on my side like the internet thing we just had crappy internet that was terrible but um, beyond that uh, I think really good yeah it was a great experience uh, yeah and now we have to refine the, the formula. Yeah, yeah. So let's re keep refining the formula. And uh, please reach out to the European side if they can make it on the first for, for sorry, the, the next Friday. So we can coordinate yeah. for the late April. Yep. Okay. Excellent. No problem. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And we'll be in touch. Yeah, see you next week. Okay. Uh, Bye. All right. Thank you. Hey, Marcin, can you hear? Yeah. Oh, uh, so what are the places planning to go concurrently at this point? Richmond, Virginia, New Zealand, Boston. Yeah? Can you hear?